Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another Syncast. Today we are going to learn about Redux with React. As you can see, Redux from level zero. So it's basically how we can get started uh, using Redux in our React application. It took me a little while to properly understand Redux and how we can use it with the React ecosystem. But then later on, I realized that, well, it's not that hard to get things started. So I think that's the main motivation behind this video to get you guys started with Redux in your React based applications. I have just created a React application uh, using the Create React App CLI tool, and I have modified some of the components to save time for our for our video. So as you can see that here we have some components like header, new post, posts, welcome, and here's our app.js component. And one more thing, we are going to use class-based React component. Here we have a header and the header is coming from this component. It's a very simple React component that has three button and that's the header. So our intention is that to connect this header component with the Redux store so we can keep the active button name and keep track of it. And once we update our Redux store, we can let the parent component know and so it can decide what component to show. So for instance, if I click on the new post, it will basically update our Redux state and it will re-render the app component so it know that it should show this new post component right here. If we have no trouble understanding what we're going to make, so let's jump into connecting our React application with Redux. To connect our React application with Redux, we need to install two different modules. One is React Redux and another one is going to be the Redux itself. Adding it pretty simple, yarn add. I'm using yarn, you can use npm as well. Redux, React Redux and the Redux. Uh, we have Redux and React Redux in our uh, application. So the React Redux is what going to let us connect our React application with Redux store. And we are going to use uh, some features like provider, Provider is a component that is coming from the React Redux. And then we are going to use the connect higher order component to uh, update or to re-render our components based on changes uh, that we made in our Redux store. But however, let's not talk all about this now. We will see them progressively as we develop the app. Before we start integrating our app with Redux, it is important to get used to with some of the keywords that we will be talking a lot about. One is the schema. So schema is something that is totally optional. I really like to have a schema in our applications when working with Redux and stuff like that because schema is something where we define our initial state for the store management system. And this makes our app much more maintainable. And then we're also going to talk a lot about the reducer. And we're going to talk a lot about action. These are the main important things that we're going to talk a lot about. And then finally, the store and what reducer and action does. I'm not going to talk a lot about the fundamental concepts of Redux, but just to let you know that reducer is something that is responsible for only to update the state that Redux has. Action is something that to decide which reducer we are going to call for certain actions that's been triggered by some events. So if you're still confused, it's no problem. Let's get going and make the app. So let's create the store. I like to have a folder called store inside our src directory. So let's create that. And inside that store folder, we're going to have a file called index.js. So first of all, we need to import create store from Redux. So for now, we're just going to have a schema as an empty array and reducer. And now let's uh, use the create store method. So export store is equals to the create store. And within that, we're going to pass our uh, reducers first and then the schema. The schema is basically to define the initial state. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna create our schema, then we will create our reducer, and then we will create an action. So inside the store folder, I'm gonna create another folder called schema. So inside the schema, we're gonna have a schema called header. Inside header, we're just going to export a JavaScript object. So export default, menu name and let's say our default value is going to be welcome that's it now we have our schema for the header 
uh, let's create a new reducer for our header. Uh, so I'm going to create another folder called reducer. And inside the reducers folder, I'm going to create a one reducer for our header. So header.js. Um, since I'm using VS Code, you can always see that which one is the reducer and which is which one is the schema. This is something I really like about VS Code. But you can always uh, change the naming convention of the JS files to better suit your needs. And this is how a uh, reducer looks like. So here we're going to have a switch case. That is going to have a action dot type. Action is an object basically, and that object should contain something called type. Type is a property that Redux would expect to have within an action. Now let's create a new case. Update menu. Here we're going to return a new state. All right, I think this break is not required, and the default is we are just going to return the state. State spreading the states and then we are going to update this active menu active menu name with action.payload or maybe we're just gonna call it menu name okay so just picture it in your head that is what our reducer for header looks like now we are going to have another folder here called action and inside the actions, we're going to have a new file called header.js. An action is basically an, an function. Uh, so we're going to call it um, update menu. And it's going to take a payload, or in our case, just a menu name. And it will return a new object that must have a property called type. You might wondering then this action is basically what we are returning from this action function, right? And that makes sense. And then we are going to pass our menu name. Now we have our action reducer and its schema. It's time we update the store file. So we have schema and reducers. I will import the header schema, header schema from schema and header. Now that we have the header schema, we are going to basically make it an object. And inside the schema object, we are going to call it header and point it to header schema. All right. So now let's import the uh, header reducer. So import header reducer from reducers and header and we can't really directly pass it towards the reducers because there will be more than one reducers and in order to combine all these reducers we have a nice helper method from redux which is called combine reducers we need to import that as well from redux so combine re combine reducers and here we will use the combine reducers and a list of all of our reducers so header uh, we call it header and we pass the header reducer within it then we have our reducers there and that way we have our store ready to be used in our application let's close everything now let's go to our um, very first component which is index.js the root component here we will wrap our app component with provider let's import it first import provider from React Redux, and then we will basically wrap our app component with that. If you save now, it will show you an error because we're not passing anything like the store. We'll do that in a minute. Now let's import the store from store. So I hope you understand that this store is basically indicating uh, this index.js file. So we are basically importing this variable store in here. And then we are passing the store in a props of the provider component. And our app just came to life. Now let's go to our header component inside the header component in order to interact with our Redux store. We will import a helper method called connector from React Redux module. Import connect from react redux and this higher order component connect takes two parameters so the one is called map state to props we will define it later and another one is map dispatch to props something we will define it later 
Here, we are going to export the hardware component called connect. First one is the map state to props. And the second one is map dispatch to map dispatch to props. In its child component, it will take this app component. Just remember it like that. Or if you don't know about how higher order component works, Google it. Because I'm not going to explain a lot about here to make this video really short and simple. Or in other words, I'm not prepared to discuss about HOC right now. So let's talk about map state to props. So remember that our intention is to use this schema, value of this schema inside our header component. How we are going to do that? Well, we use this map state to props, the pretty self-explanatory name that will map the state of Redux, in other words, our schema of the header, to the props of this component. It takes state. So we're going to return uh, only the schema or only the state that we care about for this component. That is the active menu. And the active menu lives, on, lives inside the state dot our schema name so our schema name is um, header dot um, as you can see that here we uh, give it a name of header so header dot active menu name all right so now we can save it and it reloaded without any error that means it works so let's see if we have this default value of our schema which is welcome and we can easily check that using component did mount lifecycle. Open up the console. We have welcome. So we have a map this value uh, from the Redux state to the props of our component. And we are accessing that using the props of this component, which is basically this one. And this active menu is basically coming from the state of the Redux and using map dispatch to props we can call the action methods from the props of our component so map dispatch to props takes a dispatch in the parameter and then it's going to return something called bind action creators and bind action creators is something that we will have to import from redux so let's do that import Bind action creators from Redux. And inside here, we are going to pass a list of actions followed by this dispatch. So it's time we import the action for our header. If I go to the header action, it's called update menu. So let's import that. So import update menu from store from actions and the header file and now we will uh, use this update menu here so let's save it we're going to write a new method here called handle menu change so here's our action that we will get from the props and then we can do this update menu oops update menu and we can pass whatever the name that we have here all right so i'm just gonna use it for this three buttons on click we will we will call this handle menu change so this dot handle menu change and we will pass the name so welcome is called welcome and this one is called new post this one is called all posts save that all right and now if i click on one of it pass the name okay that worked and we will now pass this to here menu name to the action now inside uh, here uh, the first thing that we will do is that we are going to disable the active button. So the active button can't be clicked. So let's do that. It's going to be pretty simple. Um, so just going to take the active menu name. 
so here active menu is equals to this dot props so it's basically we are getting this active menu from the props and now i can get rid of this component did mount and i can then now here for each the button we are going to uh, check if it is active and to do that what we are going to do is disabled and we are going to say active menu is equals to welcome new post and all posts and if it is true then it's disabled as you can see welcome is disabled now if i click on new post let's go to our uh, action this type is basically define which reducer function it should trigger so let's go to the reducer and the reducer is called update menu so i'm going to copy that and just pass that inside the type all right let's come back to here and click on the new post and it's disabled and as you can see welcome is now enabled all posts and it's working that's just the way we have envisioned now let's go to our app component and connect our app component with redux so it know which component to show based on the header state import connect from react redux and then the map state to props that takes a state and that returns which state we want so basically we can just copy that from our uh, so basically we can copy it from our header component and then we don't need to use the action that changes the menu so we can just pass a null like this so here we're going to use map state to props and since we don't need to dispatch anything we can just pass null here and then our app component save that now let's create a new uh, method here that will render the active page so let's call it render active page and here we're gonna have our active menu which is coming from the props and here we're going to have a very simple if else condition so if the active menu is equals to welcome then we are going to return the welcome component and now let's use the method called render active page so this dot render active page save that and here we have our welcome page here we have our new post seems like we have an error okay it's just a warning we don't care about warning just now and here we have our all posts so this is basically going to be the part one for our react redux tutorial and in the part two we will see how we can handle the form using our uh, redux store and most importantly we will learn about having multiple schema having multiple reducer and multiple actions it's gonna be fun and also how we render all the posts here but if you get the idea i think it, it will be pretty simple for you to done this by yourself and yeah let me know in the comment if this tutorial was helpful for you and if you are looking forward to similar videos in the future and you can follow me on twitter or facebook or instagram my uh, handle is at rockettg and also if it helps feel free to subscribe and thumbs up the video thank you for your time hope you have learned something new today and yeah again thank you for watching have a good day and bye